morning. Good morning. Good morning. My apologies that uh, we're starting a little bit late. I realized after getting here that I had forgotten the uh, the video card for the camera. <laughs> so I did a mad dash back home. Now, is that close enough? Is that better for hearing? Can you hear me? Okay, great. So, as I said, welcome to our worship. It's great to be back here in Tyne Valley for worship this morning. And so as we gather, I'm going to light the Christ candle, which reminds us that Christ is with us always. In moments of fear, in moments of joy, we are not alone. We'll now turn to our announcements for this morning. I'll start by sharing the bulletins for May, are dedicated to the glory of God and are in loving memory of the following people. Angus, Eva, sons Calvin and Arnold McLennan, Greta Grigg and Heath McLennan by Ruth McLennan and family. May, May Hardy by the family, Mary Howard and Wendell Gillis by Wayne and Janice Trousdale, and Isabel Hutchinson by Helen and Elmer Hutchinson and family. Just a reminder that we have some vacancies that need filling. Um, we still need a chair for the official board. Uh, we need someone to represent Biddeford Conway on the Vacation Bible School Committee. Nominations uh, need somebody for both Biddeford Conway and Tyne Valley. And then we need a stewards, session, M&P, and outreach rep for Tyne Valley. So if you're interested or want to learn more, please reach out to me. We'll be celebrating our graduates on Sunday, June 26th during our morning worship. And so if you know of anyone graduating from high school or a post-secondary program, please pass their name and information along to me by June the 19th. And I do encourage sending that uh, by email or calling so that I can make sure I get that written down. Next week is Walk United, uh, and so we'll be having that following our service. I'm just realizing I don't know that we brought pledge sheets from Biddeford. Do you know, John? Sorry, pledge sheets for Walk United. Did we bring them over to here? Uh, I did not. And I only thought of it too. <laughs> it, says, um, it says in the bulletin Tyne Valley, but it's at Biddeford, right? Yes. Our service next week. Right. Oh, in the bulletin. Okay, so worship next week is in Biddeford, so there is an error there. Uh, probably just a little bit of an oversight. So Walk United will be at Biddeford uh, after the service. And so if you are needing a pledge sheet, we don't have them here, but you can reach out to me and I can get a copy to you. There will be a session meeting on uh, this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. in the meeting room. Lot 14 also has a congregational meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in Lot 14 to hear quotes regarding the roof. As well, an update uh, on the plans for Vacation Bible School this year. So the committee met uh, this, I guess now two weeks ago, and it's a very small committee, there's only about four people on it. And so after some discussion, uh, they made the difficult decision to not hold Vacation Bible School for this upcoming year. Uh, there was a couple of reasons for it. Uh, part of it was the ongoing COVID situation, because last year there was only about seven or eight children that attended. The other reason is that there just wasn't enough people uh, on the committee to oversee it or to oversee a student to ensure that it would be able to happen. Uh, the hope is that after a one year hiatus there might be renewed energy and that it hopefully will be back. Transportation West is resuming their weekly lunch outings for our seniors. This was something they were doing before COVID, and so they're excited to start that back up. And so Thursdays will be the day for this area, and it will begin uh, June 9th. And so registration opens on Monday, uh, May 30th, and so the information to call is there in the bulletin. And there's no cost associated with the program. Camp Abbey has put out a wish list of items that will help the camp with their programs this summer. Uh, there's a copy of the wish list at the back of the church, 
if you want one, and it will also be available online. And so if you're wanting to make a donation, the suggestion is that we'll bring them in to here over the next couple of weeks, and then we'll make sure that it makes it to the camp. The camp's also holding an open house on June the 19th. Uh, they didn't have a time available when they shared this, but more information is to come. Finally, the board has updated our COVID-19 protocols. And so I'll highlight just a few key pieces. Uh, a copy of it is at the back of the church. But uh, beginning uh, this week, the wearing of masks will be by personal choice. Uh, you will have already noted with seating that one side has the continuation of the distancing while the other side is open uh, for seating. Um, as you can also tell, let's start it back up. <laughs> a long time in the making. So we are restarting our choir, but it will be uh, partly, of course, based on availability, but also um, recognizing the comfort level of any worship leaders that are here with us. And so as I get off on maternity leave, any worship leaders will be consulted for their comfort um, as we go along. And uh, I think those are the key pieces. Most of the rest is staying as, as we had, encouraging staying home when we're sick, um, you know, best following good practices around hygiene. But we will uh, we'll, we'll continue to have the offering plate at the back of the church but we are going to bring it forward uh, during worship. Those are the announcements I have. Does anyone else have any? <laughs> so not hearing any, let us turn to our call to worship. We give thanks for the resurrected Christ. Who seeks to walk with us. We give thanks for the resurrected Christ. Who shows us a new path. We give thanks that in Christ we continue to be called. For this we offer our thanks and praise. Our first hymn is number 179. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>
Let us pray. As we celebrate the resurrected Christ, we give thanks, O God. We give thanks for the ways Christ seeks to be present with us. For we are not alone in this world. Christ seeks to walk with us, to be our friend, our guide. And so we pray for courage as we continue to follow him. We pray this in his name as we share in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us come before God in this time of confession. Let us pray. Seeing is believing, as the old saying goes. Sometimes we wish we could see you, O God. Sometimes we wish that Jesus was still walking among us here on earth. In those moments, doubt sets in. We struggle to follow in Jesus' footsteps. But Christ reminds us that there is more for us, that we are called to continue the ministry which he began. And so we ask for forgiveness in our moments of doubt and pray that we might have the courage to follow you. Amen. Christ welcomes us. Christ loves us. Christ forgives us. Come and walk in the light and know that you have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 315, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Our first reading of scripture will be taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? According to the working of his great power, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, and not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for all the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our next reading is Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And finally, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. And Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to him, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer, to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led him out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. So let us pray. O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So this morning we're celebrating what is known as Ascension Sunday, a day in the church year that invites us to hear the story of Jesus' ascension into heaven. In the Gospel of Luke, it's this story that marks the end of that Gospel. And then if you turn to the book of Acts, 
there's almost a summary of this same story. And so it's important to realize that it's the same author for both of these books. And so Acts really almost picks up from where Luke ends off. In order to tell the stories about the beginnings of the early Christian church. But returning to our passage for this morning, it's one that we don't always take time to focus on. And so we might wonder what the purpose of this story is. First, it's important to note that this is the story that's drawing the Easter season to a close. We've been marking that season for, since April. Second, it also acts as a bridge in many ways to prepare us for what is to come, which is the season of Pentecost, which we celebrate next week. And that's in part because it's in this story, and there's several versions of it, and this is Luke's version, that speaks of Jesus' promise that the Spirit will come to be with them. Which makes this not just an ending, but really a beginning. Much like the resurrection story is both an ending, which is Jesus' death, yet a beginning because of the discovery of the empty tomb. But now here, time has passed. The empty tomb, which was an amazing discovery, has happened, and the disciples have now had more time with Jesus. Where Jesus continues to teach them and help open their eyes and prepare them for what is to come. And then in our passage today, basically it's this big announcement. Jesus says, it's time for me to leave again. But it's very different, very different circumstances. This time, there's no fear or death or violence, in the same, at least not in the same way as there was after the death on the cross. But rather, this is more of a proper goodbye, what you expect when you say goodbye to someone you love. They've had the time they needed together. They're not feeling that same sense of abandonment that they felt in that upper room that we hear just after Easter, where Jesus appears to them while they're locked away. Here, their hope has been renewed and new life is theirs, which is what Jesus came and helped them to discover. So this time they're ready. They're ready to move beyond grief and despair to a place of hope, where they're equipped for living into their calling. But then as he goes, Jesus reminds them of all that they've learned from him and makes that new promise. And in this passage, he's not explicit about it, but he says, you know, what I've already told you about, that the Father will send, it's going to come. In other words, although he will be gone, they won't be alone. They're going to receive a new gift, a new presence, that of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus gives one last instruction. In order for that to come, he says, stay and wait. And with that, Jesus ascends into heaven, leaving them to enter into a time of stillness and waiting. Now, when you think about it, it might seem a little bit odd. I mean, they just finished getting rejuvenated for their calling. Jesus has been telling them what they're called to be and do and prepared them once again. So you would think what they really should be doing is just heading right out that door and get to it, right? And once again, we feel something eerily similar. In the past, I've preached and spoken about what I refer to as Holy Saturday. That in-between day between Good Friday and Easter, a time of waiting, in this case, with, with, with uh, Good Friday and Easter, Holy Saturday is that time in between, that horrible, tragic time of despair, that initial grief where now they've been left sitting with it before the good news of Easter. Yet again, we have almost a similar pattern. I mean, it's slightly different, but here again, they've been with Jesus. Jesus says goodbye and says, I have to leave, and asks them to wait. But again, a different kind of waiting. This time, they're not in despair, one can imagine they're probably rather hopeful and eager to respond to Jesus' call. But as we know from the story of Pentecost, they do follow through with Jesus' request. They wait, even if it was difficult to do so, even if they struggled to know perhaps why they should wait. Because the truth is, waiting is often a difficult thing for many of us to do. It can be 
so difficult that we often, sometimes, speak of waiting or stillness in a very negative light. Sometimes we see waiting associated with things like inaction, or a lack of purpose or interest. Sometimes we even view it as a waste of time. I can't be the only one who gets impatient waiting in a long lineup somewhere. Or, I'm the kind of person that hates making phone calls where I know I'm going to be put on hold. Or, sitting in an appointment, I bring something along because, you know, I shouldn't just sit there and be still. When it comes to waiting, we often feel like there's something more that we should be doing. Especially if we feel like we already have the solution to a problem, or that, as I said, there's something more important we think we should be doing. We might feel ready and equipped to just head right out. But, if we stop and think about it, there's also benefits to waiting. We can all, I'm sure, attest to times where waiting, in the end, has been worthwhile. When we're preparing for something exciting like a birthday or a wedding or a special trip, waiting helps to build up the excitement, right? When you start planning, there's, that's almost as fun sometimes as the trip itself, as you dream about it. Waiting also gives us time to prepare. For example, waiting for the birth of a child. If one day you were told that there was going to be a baby and the next day the baby was on your doorstep, it's awfully hard to feel ready. Although I know that for those who choose the route of adoption, that is sometimes what happens. Or in the foster care system. But waiting gives us time to prepare. And sometimes in waiting, we discover something we've missed. We might have missed a vital piece of information we need that would have been overlooked. Or we might discover something more that, would, that will help us along the way. And so waiting helps us in so many ways, like learning new things and learning patience. And so perhaps this is why Jesus asked his disciples to pause and wait, so that they could spend time reflecting on what they had continued to learn from him, and so that they could learn and grow just a little bit more before setting off into their calling. But also, perhaps most important, was so they wouldn't miss out on something, coming of the Holy Spirit. Because the act of waiting allowed them to be open and to be looking for that special moment to come. And that's what we'll celebrate next week on Pentecost Sunday. But today, we sit and wait with the disciples in the hopes that we too might find what we need in the stillness. Because we too can benefit from a time of waiting, a time of stillness. We too can discover amazing things about ourselves, our world, our ministry, when we take time to sit in the stillness together, even when it's challenging to do so. Which is something I find beautiful about today's story. The ascension of Jesus invites us to make time to celebrate what we believe has been revealed to us in Jesus, and the ways in which Christ's presence is still known in the world today all while pausing and waiting together in hope and in prayer. And so I invite us to hear this story as not just one of celebration, but as an invitation. An invitation to join with the disciples in their waiting, to make time for discernment and reflection, where we're open to learning and growing together in faith, and where we listen and wait as we seek to know where it is we're being called to next. Because as I shared, there's times when waiting is a good thing. And so let us remember in these moments of waiting to appreciate the time we have been given. To appreciate the opportunity to pause and as the old saying goes, to smell the roses. And in the moments where it is difficult to hold back, where we find that desire to run ahead and fix things, let us remember to take a breath to hold back until the moment when we know it's truly right, to wait for the moment when you feel the winds of God pushing you forward, or when you hear that still, small voice saying, it's time. Wait for the Spirit to lead you, because the Spirit will come. This we know. But for the moment, let's wait and pray together. Let's wait and grow together. For there is much that can happen in the silence. Amen.
We'll now sing more voices, 154, deep in our hearts. which is found on the front covers of Voices United. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come to Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. So let us pray. We know, O oh God, that you call us to be disciples of Christ. You call us to see what has been given to us through Jesus, so that we might then share that with one another. And so we pray that you might guide us as we seek to live into our calling. Help us to love as Christ loves to heal as Christ heals, to live as Christ lived, and where all that we say and do helps to create a world of justice and peace. For we know, O oh God, that this is what you seek for us. And so we pray now for all the needs of this world. We lift up to you all the places that are deeply affected by war and violence. We especially remember the tragedy in the states at the elementary school, and their families. We lift up all those who are facing hunger and poverty. We lift up all who are lonely and who are grieving. We pray, O oh God, that your love might be known in all places, and that we might reach out with that same love, wherever it is we're able. We pray this in Jesus' name. 
Our minute for mission for today is entitled Learning Racism at a Young Age. The following is an excerpt from a blog written by Adele Halliday. Your mission and service gifts support anti-racism programs and initiatives like the ones Halliday develops as the United Church's anti-racism and equity lead to help us, all of us be in deeper, more equitable relationships with one another. The name calling started when she was about three years old. There were racial slurs and names and taunts. My child, my own flesh and blood, was being ostracized for having black skin. The people slinging the insults, other children on the playground. She may not have necessarily always understood the particular terms they used, but she knew it was related to her blackness and her racial identity and this deeply wounded her tender heart. Despite all of our intentional modeling, teaching, and proactive actions, our child is still already developing internalized racism and inferior notions of herself. The children who were taunting her were offering explicit and overt notions of racism, but they were children. They had not even started primary school, and yet the children had already learned behavior at home or elsewhere that whiteness is superior. And they had the audacity to vocalize that to an innocent little child. This is in part why I'm so deeply committed to dismantling racism in all its forms. Racism is damaging and destructive for all people in society and reinforces negative notions for people of color. I live it in a particular way because of my own racial identity. As a black person who has lived with racial injustice my entire life, the systemic nature of racism is something that cannot be ignored. This effort to overcome racism is a continuous effort, and I'm committed to this work for the long haul. I hope that you will be too. And so this story reminds us of the ways in which our gifts make a difference around the world and in our own country. And so we're gonna pause now and our share to present our gifts. And just a slight change to the bulletin. As the offering is being presented, we're going to sing Praise God from Who All Blessings Flow. That's number five. I was close. I was thinking four, three. 541. <laughs> and Voices United.
friends, how good and pleasant it is to be together, encouraging and consoling, provoking and inspiring. But now the service is ended, and now the wider service begins. Why do you stand and look up toward heaven? Go in peace into the world, for the love of the world. Amen. Thank you.